Welcome to Troy Kern's channel podcast where we talk all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. Today, I have a very special guest and fast friend, Matt Karstetter. So Matt and his wife, Alexis, are here. She's sitting in the background. You guys own three gyms in the Kansas City area. And I'll tell you a little bit about how I got to know you was I was admiring your beautifully built gym that I'm a member of in Westport. And I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at all these LED lights. I'm like, whoever built this knows what the hell they're doing construction wise. And so I sat on that for like six or seven months. I came back to town, rejoined your gym again. And then I just felt like, as I'm looking at these real estate deals, I need to work with it. I would need to work with this guy. And I reached out, called your wife and now you're in Vegas. We're doing a podcast. Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you did. So tell me about who you are. You own three gyms in the Kansas city area. You have a gym in Westport. You have a gym in Liberty. You have a gym in Manhattan. You're the owner of gym equipment called call sign. And you also have Jim hemp. Tell me about who you are and all those businesses and how you got started. Sure. So I went to Kansas State University, so it's Manhattan, Kansas. Okay. Um, and that's where I started my first gym. So that's where the OG is about six years ago. Okay. And that's the foundation sports training facility. Um, and I also, but prior to that, I'm a general contractor. Right. So I own a general contracting company called Alliance Developments, which I started right as I got, got out of college. Okay. So you went to uh, college, started a contracting business. Were you training prior to that? Um, you mean in the gym? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I started my first bodybuilding competition was 2007. For those of you who don't know, Matt is like ripped and so is his wife. Like, <laughs> big time. We'll give you guys their Instagram handles. You can check them out. They're in Appreciate phenomenal it. shape. Yeah. Myself and Alexis have both competed. Um, I've done, I've competed 12 times. My last show, I don't, I'm not going to compete anymore. I just, I love it, but I'm getting a little older and I love business just as much, if not more. So my last show was last August, I believe. But yeah, so I went to Kansas State University. When I was there, I was um, working landscape. And then I got a job building fences on the back of these contractors' houses. And okay. shortly after that, I got hired on to be a framer. And so wow. I was framing with these guys. I did that for quite a while. And then I when I graduated, um, I kind of realized, you know, these guys are good at their trade, but they're not necessarily the best at business. I was like, I can do this. Um, so, you know, at that point in time, I was just out of school and I knew how to study really well. Okay. So I got my uh, contractor's license. I took the national exam. So I'm a class A um, contractor across. The, so I can build basically anywhere in the United States. Wow. Um, and then so, you know, and I did that so I could build these gyms and it, Basically, I've made whatever I wanted to do. I just found a way for business to make it happen for me because I didn't really have the assets or right. I had no money at that point in time, like most college kids, right? right. So I, I did that for a little while. And then uh, after a few years in the construction business, I realized I would like to uh, have a little more consistent pay. Right. Because as you know, in real estate, you can, as you, you what you're doing, you kind of you got your cash flow properties. But at my, that point in time, I was building custom homes and spec homes. So I'd get paid out in sums throughout the year, three or four times a year. Right. So, and at the same time, I didn't think there was a good gym in town that I could train at. And I felt like I was at a disadvantage. So I built- Just knowing that from being a bodybuilder. Yeah. So I'd been competing for a while, but there was no, by the time I got done working um, and got my pre-workout in, sometimes the gym would be closed. And I was like, this isn't working. So um, that's, I bought some land in town and built a building and ultimately- put the gym in there. I had a CrossFit tenant for a little while too, but right. that's how we got started. And then after uh, two years ago, we went to Westport, opened up our second location. And then about three and a half months ago, we opened up our Liberty location. And that one is the one I just came in tour. Correct. And the other thing I forgot to introduce you about, you've got some, um, some big, uh, loves of yours, which are your pups. Yeah. For sure. Talk about them because they are on your gym wall. So they are. Well, I've my wife and I both like really, really love animals, especially dogs. Um, I've had dogs all my life. Um, Me as well. When we got married, um, we ended up. I had a black lab. He got ill, passed away, um, and we we bought an English bulldog, Gus, uh -huh. and, uh, and then probably when he was three, we bought Moo. 
M O O, yeah, I like the cow. I have a buddy of mine uh, who's uh, the guy who got me into social media. He has a dog named Moo. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. So we have Gus and Moo. If you want to check them out on Instagram, they have like almost sixty thousand followers. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, for real. Wow. They they've yeah, had me. They've had a couple of viral videos. My wife. Um, there was one that went viral. Last I checked, it had like fifty million views. 50 million views. I mean, that's just on ours that we had posted. Like, I'm sure it's been shared and we just aren't aware of it. Wow. But so we, that was at the Westport gym. She right. was working out. Gus goes up her shirt. I'm sh it was, within like 24 hours, that video went viral. And we had four different agencies contacting us. They wanted to rep him for marketing. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that odd? You're so in the dog wrapping business now. I cleared my morning schedule and I started vetting these four different ad companies and we yeah. ended up going with Juke and Media and I think they're out of LA. Um, but yeah, we licensed his content. He's had two or three viral videos. He was earning us about three, $400 a month. That's sweet. <laughs> That's a, Gus, Gus is an earner. So yeah, and he, he's always at the gym. They're at the gym right now while we're here in Vegas. They're at the gym. Like I just check the cameras. They're just hanging out at the front desk. So they're all, all, they're at the gym a lot. They're with us a lot, but they're, all, he, after that happened, I was like, well, of course I'm going to include this in some sort of branding for the gym. He's right. too popular and it occurred at the gym. So yeah, Gus and Moo, they're our mascots and I think there's people who have literally joined the gym just because we have the two Bulldogs. And that's cool because you know what? Like, dogs are like part of our family. Like when you have a dog and you're a dog lover and you realize, I just actually almost teared up the other day and I don't do that like ever. And I was watching, um, there was a cop video of a cop that died that what, he had a German shepherd and that was, you know, his partner, right? Yeah, that yeah. was his partner. And so they have the cops walking this guy down the aisle and the dog is literally pulling these two mm -hmm. cops like, and going towards the casket, which is lined with an American flag, and he knows it's his partner because he can smell him because he's a smell dog, a German Shepherd. And I was like, holy crap. It was a very, you know, when you, like, so I buried my dog out here in the desert like th three or four years ago, and, like, he died He died at my bedside when I was out of town, and, like, I honestly had not cried in, like, 13 years, and I cried like a little boy, and I was like, holy crap, man. So dogs are special. I mean, they're, they, they, you know... I can say this, there's, you can, uh, th no matter what you do, they're, they got your back. For sure. And that's, and that's something special. So when I went into your gym, one thing that really impressed me that I didn't know about you when, we were, when I first met you was that you have your own gym equipment, that you fabricate all your stuff. It means you're more than just a gym owner. You're more than just a contractor. You're a businessman. And that you are like, like not just a businessman opening gyms, but you're trying to build like major like like gym hemp. So talk about call sign and gym hemp a little bit. So call sign is a it's so we make barbells, dumbbells, bumper plates, Olympic plates. Basically, when I was outfitting the gyms, the first one was a ton of learning, right? right. And it was, the gym equipment's very expensive, and I thought, man, I want to keep doing this. But, and if I'm going to, I may as well make my own equipment because I'm going to pay for it one way or another. Right. And, of course, your startup costs expensive. Uh, your molds are really expensive. Right. But if you do that five, six, seven, eight, ten times, you know, I mean, it makes a lot more financial sense. Right. And it allowed me to control the quality of what I was getting. Um, I mean, the stuff that we make is pretty much bulletproof. Um, we don't – we only have about – six different products but i did that intentionally because they're warranty they're basically warranty proof we don't have a warrant we don't need to have a big warranty department because it's not going to break right you know and that so we have that equipment in there um do I've you been, sell that equipment to other gyms yeah we do um you know i i started call sign about three years ago i have a partner now i brought on a one of my friends later on he wanted to get involved but i started it early on i was just planning on just doing it for the gyms right and then he wanted to come on and Unfortunately, it was right during the pandemic, and I was it's hard to get materials. Um, right. Just an odd time. And initially, my model was I wanted to go to the NFL, you know, the okay. NBA. I wanted to go to the Big 12, all the big schools. Right. Um, but then during COVID, I realized there's a really big demand for just retail. You know what I mean? Right. Why did you want to go after the big things the first time? Money, or was it you felt that that was the best opportunity to – build your brand the fastest? Maybe a little bit of both, but simplicity also. Okay. I would rather 
load up a semi and send it to, you know, right, okay. the Las Vegas Raiders right. rather than send two bumper plates to a guy in Texas. Yeah. Not that we wouldn't do it. It's just that's what my initial plan was because um, shipping is a whole other business. You know oh, what I man. Mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, so that was initially the goal. We just had to switch. Starting a shipping company? <laughs> I've been talking about starting a shipping company for two and a half years. So it's in the works. I, I would love to do it. It's just... I mean, what do I do? Get my CDL and then I drive my own trucks? Like, it that would work on a very minimal scale, and then I wouldn't be able to do the other things that I really love to do. I think it's going to be coming down to like an app type of form with shipping and anything these days. I think you're just going to be able to, you know, maybe get into the app development business and be like, all right, I want to get this product to this location. Who's willing to do it for X number of price? Sure. And then you don't need to have the equipment because that's the most expensive part. Like, you don't want to get your CDL, right? I own a tow truck business. It's not a good business to be in, okay? So, but, you know, if you start thinking in the software platform, like all these, like, Turo apps, these shared economies, these shared spaces, you might be able to find, like, some sort of freight uh, company or create some sort of freight app that just ships your equipment. And then it turns into a whole new business on its own. Right. I don't know. No, and I think there are some apps out there. Like I think Uber Freight you know, oh, really? has some stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's just right now, we, we just opened the Liberty location a few months back. So I'm kind of just fielding opportunity at the moment. You know, I want to see, I know that a lot of things can make money, but I want to find something that makes good money and I'm passionate about. I can get excited about. Right. Or I can team up with somebody that has, has the passion for it and I can just support them. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to it. I've looked into it pretty hard. I've uh, talked to a few guys that are potentially interested, but, you know. Um, nothing solid yet, so I'm just kind of considering opportunity. And the thing that makes that call sign product really great is that you said you put steel as a lot of guys use cement, right? So the difference with our our bumper plates are solid steel. Uh, a lot of companies use pot metal. Um, so a bumper plate is just the plate you put on. So the our bumper plates are competition bumper plates, but it's a solid steel disc, and then it's wrapped in polyurethane. Right. Um, a lot of them are wrapped in rubber. And okay. they look the same, right. they almost feel the same, but they will not last anywhere near as long. Right. Polyurethane is, in my opinion, the only way to go. Okay. Because uh, I'm not trying to race to the bottom. You know, right. Right. we're not the cheapest by any means, yeah. um, but everything we sell is quality. Um, and, you know, my goal is, originally my business plan was to put 5% of our sales towards uh, PTSD research. For soldiers okay um is there a special place in your heart for that or a lot of my friends in manhattan kansas because fort riley's right there okay. are soldiers uh -huh. you know i've had the opportunity to meet a lot of them through the gym right and it's the gym's really impacted them in a, a way i just wasn't expecting right you know these guys come back yeah. um one of my good friends was a high level sniper right and it's like the last thing they need to do is sit in the basement in a recliner, think about how bad of a person they are. You know right, what I mean? Right. They got to get something to keep them active. And, sure. you know, training is one working out. I say training, but tr working out is a really good form of uh, therapy for those guys. But that's yeah. not it. That's not the only thing. There's a lot of different things out there. You know, art, psilocybin. Did I say that right? Psilocybin. There's a lot of different ways that you can treat these guys rather than just throwing opioids at them, you know. Right. And that, and that's, yeah, mental health and stuff like that is so important these days. And now that, you know, people are getting woke or they're getting just whatever, you know, they're starting to look into alternative medicines. Um, I'm a big fan of alternative medicines. I think that a lot of the stuff that's out there these days, whether it's approved by the FDA or whatever, is just garbage. Um, I'm taking my journey in fitness, uh, hot yoga starting, uh, I think I told you about that's that. What's up. Yoga's, yeah, I, yoga's really I was going to ask you about that. Like as a bodybuilder, so you competed for how many years? My first competition was in 2007, and then my last show was last year. I always worry about in business competing with guys who compete in fitness because they have a different level. They just have a different, like my brother-in-law um, is has competed in stuff before. He's jacked up, but he's hard into anything that'll get you there quick. <laughs> You could totally get to wherever you wanted to be physically if you wanted to, just the way you're wired. Right. It would just mean that we'd have to set out a game plan and set goals. You know what I mean? Right. But the, it's there's a lot. I I said this the other day. I'm not surprised when I see guys that are in shape that are super successful in business because discipline doesn't discriminate. I mean, if you can be disciplined in one area, 
you can be disciplined in others. hundred you know? percent. So yeah, I think it's just if you would prioritize it and uh, it's a hundred percent. You're going you're going a mile a minute, so you're doing so many things. If you can squeeze it in, and I can help you with that. Yeah, I'd love to. You know, I think that that's one of the things that reasons I started the podcast is to meet other people that I wouldn't normally meet and get and be able to educate myself and whoever's listening. And if you're listening right now, the most important thing that you could do is hit a five star review, share this video with a friend, and subscribe, and ask questions to guys like Matt um, because they've got lots of information from being in the fitness industry for lots of years, and everything is the same. Like I've been going to the gym for. I guess like 30, nah, 25 years now. But just because you go and play golf for 25 years, you go to the gym for 25 years, until you get educated about the right way to eat, sure. the right way to lift weights, all this stuff, it doesn't matter. No, I mean, the gym's just one part of it. Right. You know what I mean? It's Everybody says, oh, it's a lifestyle, and that's so cheesy to say, but really it is, you know? Um, diet is probably the hardest thing. Right. Um, for you too? Yeah, for me, but it's opposite. Like, I can't eat enough. I have a high metabolism. When I was training, when I was competing, it was hard for me to get the meals in. You know, when I'm off season, I'm eating six meals a day, seven meals a day. I got to the point after about a month, my body's like, oh, we're not digesting this anymore. You're just, <laughs> well, what are you eating? Are you eating good stuff? For sure. Um, You're not going to 7 Eleven. No. Okay. I mean, chicken and rice, beef potatoes, stuff like that, egg whites, spinach. But with my metabolism, I needed more. I, I needed at least one cheat meal a day. Otherwise, I mean, I would, I couldn't keep the weight on. Right. Um, so I have to continue to eat. So now I've kind of, I've dialed back. I'm like I told you earlier. I'm about 25 pounds lighter than I was when I was competing, but I've dialed back on that, and I'm more focused on business now because I it really made my business attention suffer because it's hard. You, if you're I'm an, I was on the national level. And if you're competing at the highest level, it's hard to do multiple things well. You know, it That's takes true. your focus. Where your focus goes, grows. Yeah, and, I, and if anybody, my friends, my family, if when they, if you follow me in my bodybuilding career, you'd see leap years with me. One year I'd be focused on on my bodybuilding. Next year it'd be construction. Next year it'd be body. I had to pick and choose, and that's why I built my first gym because I was trying to put the construction company and the gym under the same roof so I could conquer both. Still not easy you know what i mean yeah but i think it's smart the way you're doing things like you're building one gym at a time through an sba and one gym at a time adds up yeah. and you're you had one now you got three you're probably gonna have four pretty soon yeah and we're uh gonna franchise as well i have some people pretty interested i have some good friends um one gentleman in colorado who's really gonna do well with it when i'm ready but i have trouble saying okay it's ready you know what I mean? And I got to find the right spot and it's got to, we have to have our processes. Well, it's your, it's your baby. Correct. And yeah. to be honest, you know, I think it's funny when you went, go into my gyms and you see this is so great. I see imperfection. I go in there and I'm like, man, I got to, I should have done this different. I need to do this. You know what I mean? Right. But I've learned not to voice that because right. most people don't see it. Right. You know? Um, For sure. A hundred percent. Like when I, I was flipping a house out here the other day, a condo, and I realized just looking at it with my eye, like they have, don't have the right tile on both sides. Like they, they like grabbed whatever tile and they're very similar. And so they put one tile on the, the main wall and then the other wall is this different tile that looked the same. And I was like, nobody's gonna notice that. I noticed that. Sure. And, and you'll notice it every time you go in. Yeah, That's my thing. I gotta be comfortable with being able to like, cause every time I walk by something that I didn't do 110% or I didn't turn out the way exactly I wanted it. I think about it every time I walk by it. Uh, so that's just something I got to get over a little bit because you don't want to be such a perfectionist that you can't enjoy it. Um, and most people don't care right. for the most part. Right. But Some people do, and those people that you have are probably not going to ever be happy because they're just going to figure out something to complain about. Right, right. What drives you? I think you would relate. I think you're just kind of born with a little bit of drive. Whether right. I don't, I do think that's something that, you, you know, being driven is something you can build over time. I do think you can do that for sure. Right. But I also think there's something you're born with to a degree. I mean, I have three older sisters. I'm the only boy. I'm the youngest. Yeah. Um, and I was, you know, I didn't have any brothers. And I was really, if I wanted to do something, I wasn't, I, I didn't have had anybody to really help me do it. Right. Brother-wise, I didn't, it wasn't a group effort. It was like, all right, I got to figure this out. And I think that's really transpired into my adult life too, that, 
I don't necessarily rely on other people to give me the, the go ahead. You know, I mean, I don't ask a lot of permission to do a lot of things when it comes to the bank. Yeah, but it just means if you don't want to do it, I'll find somebody else to do it with me. Right. You're not slowing down. You're not waiting. You're getting it done. And that's just been, yeah, I think a lot of, we talked about this the other day, nature versus nurture. And I'm like, it's all nurture. And it could not be, it could be a lack of nurture. It could be the environment of nurture. But if you're raised by monkeys, you're a monkey, you know? And if you have, like, with me, mine was simple. I had two sisters, and I was the only boy. And, you know, I was kind of out there on my own. And if I wanted to figure out how to do it, my parents were broke. We were renters. We were in a good school district. That was about the only thing that we had going for us. That property got foreclosed on. One of our properties got foreclosed on. And they never told me about that stuff as I was a kid. They told me about it when I brought them into my uh, my studio and we started doing like life story stuff and I found out, it was like, oh, that's why. So I think that having a chip on your shoulder and a lot of people telling you you can't do stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, I just like, when somebody tells me, oh, you can't do that or, oh, you can't do that or that's not impossible. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna prove to them that they're wrong. Sure. You know, I think I was similar in that regard as well. The older I get, the less I really care. Yeah. You know, if yeah. they think it's something that's worth my time or if I'm able to do it, um, and I don't really talk about what I'm doing a whole lot, I'm trying to come out of my shell a little bit, but I think it's just, and I think you're the same. If we're not making progress, I literally get depressed. I have, I need something to work on. I need to add value. Um, I mean, I have no desire to, kick up my feet and be fed grapes all day. Like, yeah. I don't want to, I mean, I need to work on something. I need to, I want to have a project. I want to add, add value, whether it's a physical project or helping other people too is super rewarding. Right. But I just can't sit around. And that's, that's interesting. My wife just said, you know, we moved, just moved to Kansas City four months ago. And she said, when are you going to stop? I said, didn't you understand when you said for better, for worse, the, the worst part is I'm not ever going to stop. Well, dude, and you have kids. We don't have kids. And, I mean, we go hard. I'm like, how does he go this hard? And it was the first time we met on site to look at a property. You had your children with you. And I'm like, that's impressive. But so many people discard, disregard their passion when they have children. And, they you know, they get not necessarily lazy, but more complacent. It's all about the kids. And I'm sure you're a great dad. But I the way you are able to handle business the way you do from the – the little minute, limited time I've known you is super impressive. I appreciate that. I just, you know, with my kids, I feel like, man, I want them to learn all this stuff. So like, if I can say, hey, I met this guy at a gym, I reached out to him and now we're talking in front of a building and I can tell you guys that and you guys can see that. Sure. And then they can be with me like in situations. And you mentioned that you were taught as a framer. And it's funny because I told my son, you're going to learn how to frame. Why? I don't care about your math. I care about how you can think and solve problems and right. framing, believe it or not, is probably framing is probably the, one of the toughest math and thinking skill sets that you can learn in construction. Anybody can run wires. Anybody can, you know, there's obviously some other things that are talented and stuff like that, but you got to use, uh, what the hell is it? The T square, what, what's the thing called? The framing square? The triangle. The, what, what were the thing, the triangle that you guys all yeah, have? Yeah, it's a framing square. Or okay. a, yeah, framing triangle. I never framed. No, it's all good. <laughs> uh, and th yeah, that's in every framer's little tool bag, right? Right. But it's just one of those things watching these guys, because we're, we're framing up our house right now. That's like something that allows, do you still think that way? What do you mean? Like in like numbers, like three quarters, and when you're looking at stuff. Okay. So I've never liked math. Okay. I mean, I got a college degree. But I just was not interested from when I was, like, in middle school. It's just hard for me to pay attention if I'm not into something. Right. Um, and I always figured, you know, I, like, I got a calculator. Like, why do I need to know this? Right. But when I – I'm a more of a visual guy. Um, and, you know, when it comes to measurements, stuff like that, it's, unless you're doing a custom house with a bunch of radius, you know, um, drop ceiling, like – coffered ceilings, things that you have dimension. It's not terribly difficult. Um, I think you learn the most just by getting into it. Right. Just uh, by going and doing it. Yeah. Because, I mean, after I started my construction company, I was running two crews early on, bartending at night, running two crews during the day. And there was guys that wanted to come on that were getting out of college, and they had their degree in uh, construction science, but they couldn't. Frame. Uh, they could barely nail two boards together. You know what I mean? I'm like, right. that's great if you need, if I need, have a code question. 
right? I, but, I call you. you know, but a lot of this stuff is just like get in there, get, figure it out, and right. get with. It's great if you have somebody that can teach you and is willing to teach you. But that's why I started framing because I wanted to own my everything I've done business wise is because I'm trying to find a way to make my business make the life I want, uh, make my business pay for it. And I knew and it's like starting in the mailroom if you want to be like the CEO in New York City, right. you know. I knew I had to start somewhere, and so I started framing, and it was how I got my start. And I started with little spec houses. Shortly after, I got really bored with spec houses. I started doing customs, and now I do mostly commercial. Um, and now I don't really. I keep my. I got my license active and my insurance active, but I really don't build for too many other people. I do it so I can do my own projects. Right. It's become like a tool for what you're doing. So, are, what is your biggest mistake that you've made? in business? I think efficiency with your time. Being efficient overall is crucial. Um, you know, you can make more money, but obviously we're not going to get any younger. And then, you know, fast forward to present time. I've been with my wife uh, almost five years. You know, it's, I'm 10 times more passionate because I can bounce ideas off her. You know, she's not a, na- she's not a naysayer, not a negative person. Let's me work through the process. And then we talk about, well, what if? It yeah. doesn't work after the fact. Like I, It's fun to get excited about things initially, and a lot of things don't work, and it can be exhausting to be around guys like us because yeah. we're constantly considering <laughs> yeah. things. Right, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do that. We can do it all. Hey, yeah. You want to go look at this property with me? I don't know. We've looked at 20 in the last two weeks. Do we really want me to go? You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And I do. I want to, like, everybody always says, will you look? Yes, I'll look at that. I'll look at any property if it's the right price. Because you're going to learn something looking at that property. I just look at it as knowledge base. But yeah, you're right. Time, you can't get back time, and health is important. So if you're if you're listening, most of the people who listen to, who subscribe, who listen to my Instagram, to anything, are between the ages of 17 to 44. They skew 80% male. Knowing that, it's like my gym base. <laughs> knowing that, what would you give those folks? in terms of a advice to get in shape and to make a change in their life and business if they want to get ahead. Because people who are listening to this podcast are listening because they're probably on the fence of taking action. Maybe they're just like trying to build, like when I, before I get into anything, like whether it's uh, working out or running, I'll start to watch people and see like, okay, how's this guy do this? These guys who are good runners. What advice would you give to people who are listening to this right now? Definitely figure out what you're passionate about because – Without that, it's going to be hard to continue after like the excitement of getting going starts. Right. Um, determine what you're excited about and find the most efficient way from to get from point A to the next point. And that might not may not be the way everybody else does it. I'm not saying go break the law, but don't worry about following everybody else's rules. Right. You know, I think efficiency. And I've told my friends this: efficiency with your time. Be in a, be in a, be efficient with your money, your time, anything you're going after. Try and figure out. What's the best way? And just because it's the fastest doesn't mean it's the most efficient because, you know, you need to gain skills and knowledge and experience. Um, so I guess figure out what – I would say figure out what you're passionate about. Find out what is the most direct route to get where you want to be. And, you know, if there's a – no job should be beneath you if it's making you that much closer. I mean, if you hate putting chairs together and you go get a job building chairs and that doesn't really make sense and it doesn't apply to your future purpose. But – you know, if you're wanting to start a mortgage company, you know, go get a job as a receptionist for a, a mortgage company. Go Anything that gets you a little bit closer shouldn't be beneath you. And I think a lot of people feel like might be a little proud to do a certain job. Uh, but there's too many proud people out there, man. I'm picking up the garbage. Do you pick up the garbage in front of your gym? Absolutely. Yeah, right. my, myself and my staff. We all do. Right. And if you didn't do it, you wouldn't expect your staff to do it. I mean, I'll do things like that on purpose. So they, I restripe my own parking lot in Manhattan because we have glass garage doors. Everybody can see me doing it. And it's like, oh, well, if he's willing to do that, then I should be willing to do this. And it's like, you, you got to pace. You do. You got to lead by example. Right. I mean, there's something to be, you got to delegate so you don't just spend all your time. But you ma- probably like a little bit of that stuff. I do it, to <laughs> be honest. And I like construction more as I get deeper into business because it lets me retract. Right. And get focused on a task, yeah. and I can kind of be in my by myself, and I don't have to be delegating a million things or thinking about a million things. I can step back and I can just strike these lines. You know, I can build this 
counter. You know, do whatever you need to do, and it's. There's some things, yeah. There's some things that just are fun, and you, like you said, like, and they give you like a little bit of a reprieve. I had the hardest time. I sprayed all of my units out here, 52 of them, for bugs because I was getting quotes, and they were like 700 bucks to go and walk around my lot. I'm like, I could do that. Yeah. And it's do my own pest control .com. Yeah, and I think to add to that, one tip would be be willing and be able to do things yourself, even if you're not going to. You know, there's guys that want to get into real estate, and but their past experiences in banking. So if they go, they hire these guys, they, they can tell them anything. They say, oh, well, you need a new inverter or something or other, <laughs> right. which isn't even real, right. or something out of the norm, and they'll charge you three times the price. If you don't have any experience, how do you know when you're getting taken advantage of? And right. so, and like you said, you know, you weren't getting the prices you wanted. So you went and did it yourself. You were capable, not something you're going to do daily, no. but you're willing to do it if you need to do it. Cause it's got to get done. Right. You have to be, if you're going to be a business owner and you're going to think that like everything is going to be done by everybody else. Cause I own the business and I'm McDonald's. You're not. And when you're starting out, you have to be willing. If a, somebody doesn't show up at the gym and you need someone there for whatever, you're going to be the one that shows up. If someone doesn't, like here all the time, like, um, I don't know if you noticed my fortification of the garbage. I'll show it to you after we uh, left here. But we had a huge issue with the garbage here. Like it was a constant issue where it was taking my time, my money, my effort, my energy. And nobody was willing to step into the plate here because we have a HOA that doesn't manage anything. And I think we talked about this when we first met about asking for permission versus asking for forgiveness. Sure. And and I just said, you know what? I'm going to fix this thing for good. I'm going to fortify this, this garbage that continues to get illegal dumped by everybody. So we don't have this problem anymore. And so I, you know, everybody agreed. And then when it was time to pay, nobody ponied up. And so I did what I did and I locked everybody out and then everybody paid except for one guy. And then he wanted to pay. And I said, I don't like your attitude. So you go, and, and he was a friend of mine yeah. was, yeah. <laughs> and I said, I just didn't like the way you came across everything. You were being very, uh, juvenile about this whole situation so if you drive around this parking lot here you'll see that one guy just got his own dumpster and everybody else is using ours and it's costing him a lot of money but i the reason i say that is you know sometimes we focus on what we don't want to do sometimes we focus on like oh man this is not a good use of my time but what i heard from you is that nothing's beneath you sure. and i think that people more people need to take that attitude like you, when I called you and then you reached back out to me and you're like, yeah, I want to get together. And I was like, sweet, this guy wants, versus if somebody says you reach out to them and then they never get back to you or whatever. And it's like, okay, there's somebody who has mutual interest. Now I know this guy's a doer. Now I know he's somebody who wants to take action. Now I know that you're, you're a constructor. I'm like, okay, we can do projects together and stuff like that. Now we can start thinking big. While you're out here in Vegas, I mentioned something to you, but the first time we met, I want you to pay attention to it when you leave the studio. I mentioned Las Vegas Athletic Club. Mm -hmm. You should go, if you have some time tomorrow, and take a little tour just to kind of get what I was telling you so that you can see it through your eyes. Okay. They've got a bunch of those locations, but I think it'll be like if we ever do something big together in Kansas City, I would like you to at least see that. Well, you have to. If I mean, you got to see what everybody else is doing too. You know, I don't necessarily base how I operate off of that. But when I, a few years back, I went to Kuwait and I went to oxygen gym. It's supposed to be the best gym in the world. So I went out there, you know, I recently, my wife and I just did a gym tour in Colorado right. last month or yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just good to know whatever, because you always get ideas, you know, you just go, you're going to come away with something right. and give you an idea of what you should do, what other people are doing, what you could do. I see that, like, man, I could do that, but I could even do this with that and make it better. Right. So just go check out what other people are doing. I got a few more questions for you. Okay. What is the one thing that you accomplished that looking back at it, you thought, and it could be the gym, but that you said, I, I, I'm never going to get this accomplished. Like just going back, like to when you first got, got out of college and you're a young guy and now you're here where you're at today and you got a lot of success going on. You got three major gyms. You got a bunch of real estate. You got a con construction company. You got the call sign. You got um, Jim Hemp. You've got all these things going on. What accomplishment are you most proud of that you thought, like, man, I w didn't see that ever happening? You know, a lot of time, almost every project, especially early, the projects I was on, 
I was not sure how we were going to pull it off. Right. You know, so I kind of think those are victories there for me. When I was building my first gym, I mean, I'd never built a gym before. The Manhattan, Kansas local code office is pretty strict. So it was tough. I mean, I don't know how we made it through. I was I went over budget. Um, and the one reason why I started the gym, because I had to put a moneymaker in the building. Um, so that was probably one of the biggest that I pulled that off. So you bought the building. So I bought land. Okay. Yes. I'll make this trying to condense the story a little bit, but you know, I had been in construction for years and I was doing um, custom homes and I had somebody approach me. They're like, Hey, w w I want to have a CrossFit gym. I know you're a contractor. Will you build me a gym? And so I was like, Oh, I've been looking for to build an office for my construction headquarters. So I gave him a lease. They signed the lease, built the gym, ended up being about 80,000 over budget for me at that time was a lot, const you know, commercial construction, that's not terrible. I mean, right. this is a $1.2 million building, so right. it was to be expected a little bit. But uh, for me, I had to figure out a way to cover the mortgage because I wasn't prepared for that. Um, so I I was going to have run the construction business, lease out the majority of the warehouse space to the CrossFit tenant. A couple years later, I was going to put the gym in there. Well, that got fast-forwarded two years. So that's why I started the gym. Right. You know, I ate it for a long time, finally started making a little bit of money. Um, when he says eats it, he was feeding it. Yeah, yeah, con yeah, construction, my other construction company, I did good the year prior, and so I was able to float it for a while, um, and luckily, I don't, you know, there's a, probably a six-month gap where I don't really know how we made it through, but you figure it out, Right. you, you do what you got to do, um, so then I f fast forward after that, I uh, wanted to go to, my goal had always been to get to Kansas City, Right. and so three years after I opened that one, I tried to, to go to Kansas City. I got under contract to buy a piece of ground in Lenexa, um, and I was going to build this big facility. I think I've shown you the building that I designed. I haven't seen it. No, oh, I haven't. No. Okay. No, i got to see I'm it. I'm pretty proud of it, so I show it to a lot of people. But okay. uh, I couldn't get through the city. They said it was too modern for the spot that I was in. They wanted me to try and pair the neighborhood, look like the Sprouts, right. green metal roof and yeah. tan stucco, stuff like that. Yeah. And I worked we'll hard. design your building for you. That pretty, you want much, to build. pretty much. <laughs> right. and, yeah, and I didn't have a, my budget was already at the top. And so, I mean, I worked for probably f four months trying to get that through. You know, I ended up not being able to pull it off the city. I got to the point where I just couldn't afford to keep going down that road with them. And uh, there for a while, I mean, I felt really defeated. Right. I came, I mean, it cost me about $55,000 to make that attempt. Um, it didn't happen. I came back to Manhattan, and I, there was a couple of weeks where I was like, I, "I don't have any business doing this. I shouldn't have done that." What was I right. think? I almost now, joined, yeah, and I almost yeah. joined the army. Really? Believe it or not, yeah, because I when I came to college, I was on it. I almost did the same thing. It's funny. No kidding. Yeah, nineteen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So I came to K State on a ROTC scholarship. So you were already involved in. Yeah, I wanted to be a fire pilot. That was my. That's what I really wanted to do. Um, after I got to college, though, that program got flooded because it was right after nine eleven. Okay. And I just, I don't know. I just didn't see it in the cards for me getting to do what I wanted to do. Um, and I'm not exact. I mean, I am definitely a patriot, but I'm not super fond of the government. Right. Um, just. Yeah, you want to fight for your country, but you don't believe where they're going right now. A lot of the time, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I didn't end up doing that. So they were doing street to seat in the Army. I have a couple of friends that are Apache pilots. One's an instructor. He's like, you should apply for street to seat. And basically, it's an expedited thing to get you. They needed pilots. Right. But the Apache is a war, war machine. You don't. I was like, where's the eject button? Because they put me in it. Yeah. They're like, you don't eject. And Die. I, <laughs> and the only, the only bulletproof partition is between... But on your back and your navigator. Right. And so it's like, man, you either tuck tail and run or you stay and fight, which I'm down with it, whatever. I think it's awesome. you got to have those guys. But I also, you know, I had the gym in Manhattan, um, and I had my wife, and it was to the point where it's like, well, they couldn't guarantee me I would be stationed at Fort Riley. And after I weighed my pr the pros and cons, I said, nah, backed off. And then I kind of got – Did you go to MEPS? No. Okay, so I went all the way through MEPS processing the whole thing. Wow. Yeah, and then they were, you know, owning me, like, before I got there, because I had to get a waiver for this arm right here, because I had a pin and a plate put in it when I was 16 from breaking it. Oh. And so they're like, we need a waiver for that. Are you good using it? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine using it. And they're like, all right, well, we need a waiver. And they had got me in it early to take the ASVAB and do all of the crab walks and pee in the cups and do all that stuff. So I was going in. Mm -hmm. Like, my dad was in, my grandpa was in, and... I w didn't want to go to college. 
And so then when I was there, I'm waiting and I told him like, hey, I have to go to work. I was working at Red Robin in Issaquah at the time, which is in Washington State. And um, I told the guy who was the recruiter, I'm like, you know, yeah, I'm willing to go in early because he wanted to process me right away. I'm willing to go in early, but I got to be at work at 11. It was an all night thing. You went and took the ASVAB at like five o'clock in the morning. You do all, that. Yeah. So you do all this stuff and then I'm just sitting there waiting for my, my uh, waiver for this arm. And finally I was just like, I got to go to work. And they never called me back. And that was like, I would have been in the army if they just got me the waiver. That's, that was so th things happen for a reason. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I mean, shortly after that, I kind of got my groove back a little bit, um, licked my wounds and found there's a building that is now Westport uh, foundation that I had looked at prior to the next. So the guy called me, he's like, Hey, I got a building. It'd be great for a gym. I'm like, well, I'm already under contract. I'm building. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I thought about it. I was like, all right, let's do that. <laughs> so I went back in there and I bought that building from him and that prior to that, he was trying to lease it to me. I called him. I was like, well, I don't want to lease it. I'll buy it if you want to sell it. Yeah. And luckily he did. I got, a, I worked a good deal on it and, uh, that gym's done well. Um, it wasn't exactly what I had in mind in my first location going to Kansas city but it's a really nice spot for the downtown area. I think it's perfect. I see, like, I watch the membership, like, you know, from, like, when it's at its peak. It seems like it, between three and five, it really yeah. booms out there. And it's a perfect, I think, amount of space and everything for where it's at. Yeah, and it's, you know, Kansas City's served us really well. There's just a lot more people to, to pull from. Right. Um, and, you know, shortly after, I started hunting property again. And my bank was like, uh, no, nah, you need to slow down. Slow down. Wait till it's two years on the book so we can count it towards your tax returns. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. And I kept doing my thing. And I, I found a property. I negotiated it over seven months. And this is during COVID. Right. This is a Liberty property. And mm -hmm. uh, I got it to where I wanted it. I got a good spot deal on it. I walked away from it twice. Uh, you know, you don't ever, never make an emotional decision on a project. Right. So I, I waited it out, waited it out. And I finally got to where I could make it make sense. And I signed the contract, and I went to the bank, and I presented, and they're like, "Well, you should lease it." And I, and if you wait till next year, I'm like, "Well, that's great because I already signed the the contract." Right. I was like, "I'm doing this, and I hope it's with you." And luckily, they backed me, and uh, here we are. You know, it's it's done well. I enjoy Kansas City, but we're also looking for other markets. And I've said it before, but I'm I like I love the gym. It's a lot of fun. It's cool to see how strongly it impacts people. Um, it's just a really good outlet. Right. Um, but I also really enjoy construction and real estate. So that's kind of where we're headed. And, you know, call sign was a separate business, but it played into the gym business. Jim hemp is a separate business that pays into the gym business. They all kind of synergistically work together. Um, same thing with the, the gyms, you know, it's the real estate. We own the real estate and we own or operate out of that. Now that's probably not something that I'll continue to do forever. Um, cause I'm going to own a lot of the real estate. That's not going to be a gym. Right. That's great. So the only thing I don't think we talked about was uh, Jim Hemp. What exactly is Jim Hemp? Jim Hemp is, you know, we had had two products. We're really just doing the straps now. So it's we had hemp oil okay. uh, um, and uh, the lifting straps. So I wanted... I wanted to get in on the cannabis boom about three years ago. Me right? too. That's what we should build. We need to build a giant place in Kansas City to sell weed. Well, I was part of a group of attorneys and doctors that we put in for it. Um, they well, brought me on because I was a contractor. I was going to build a facility. So but, Kansas is next. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I guess we were Missouri. So Kansas is next. So if you're if you're serious, I've got the right connections. I think we should do it all day. I was, I'm a hundred percent. I think we had that conversation at your at your gym, but we both partake in it. So why not? Right, right. Well, and I've des I mean, I've worked with other people. We've designed uh, multiple different facilities. Well, I've been in all the ones in Vegas here, so I've been like planning that move, like wherever I'm at. Like, mm -hmm. I tried to get the one in Missouri. I didn't apply for the one out here because it was saturated. Uh, you. Here's the thing. The reason I left Las Vegas, um, it's just a big boy club, and I'm a small guy right now. And I've told my wife last night, I'm like, I'm coming back in 10 years. Like, just like, you know, I'm coming back in 10 years with a little more fuel, a little more gas in the tank, to, because you got major corporations. I, I mentioned to you when you were asking about places to stay, I said Resorts World. Those guys rebuilt that casino like three times around Singapore, Malaysia. They don't, they're pissing billions of dollars. So for me to try to compete with people like that, I need to go to smaller markets sure. and make changes. But um, 
There's just so much. Yeah. The, so I, when, when Vegas started legalizing marijuana, I'm from Washington, which is like one of the first states that did it. And um, so I've watched their little, like the Colorado play, which is like come in and cool and chill out and hang out, whatever. And then you watch the Vegas play, which is like get in, get out. And like, we're going to try to sell as much as well. I think there's a cross blend of those two where you got the lounge area where people, if they want to kick it all day and buy blunts and smoke them in the coffee shop environment. And then you've got your McDonald's, which is for the guy who's like trying to get in and get out. Sure. So I'm a hundred percent like I either where I could do it in Kansas city, Mississippi is another place that's supposed to be legalizing it pretty soon. Like pretty much every 50, every one of the 50 States is going to legalize it. Yeah. It's, you probably know the application process is super difficult. I mean, our group spent a few hundred thousand dollars on getting everything ready to submit, you know, hired this, I can't remember the name of the company to write our application for us, this, that, and the other. And didn't turn out. So it's, I mean, it takes it, not everybody off the street is just going to be able to get it. And it is political. Yeah. You got to know that you're going to get it before you apply. Yeah, I guess so. I that's, mean, that's the I wouldn't know because I've not got it. But, uh, but the gym hemp, I was, you know, that was before even they were going to legalize it in Missouri. I was laying in bed and I woke up. I was like, I need to make hemp lifting straps. It's like that. And I've been, I was always wanting to try something on Amazon too. Yeah. So I was like, this will be a perfect little product I can come up with. Well, the first straps were really coarse. The nice thing about hemp is it's three times the strength of cotton. Okay. And it's antimicrobial. So those you can sweat in them, throw them in your bag. They're not going to grow mold and stink. Okay. Um, so they're, it's a great product, but the first ones were really coarse. So I hired, I found a ribbon company. They make ribbons, which they literally in a loom spin these fiber by fiber. Right. And they came out way soft. It's like, you know, they have the soft spun t-shirts. Right. Similar process, I think. Right. Um, and so I started that and, you know, it's been successful and I've done nothing for it. I have a website. I sold on Amazon for a year, got like 2000 sales just for the credibility and the reviews. And then I pulled it, may go back on debatable. Um, but I'm wanting to lean more into it. It's only a single product. Like I think you probably, I probably need a couple of the follow-up products might do a, a weight belt or knee straps, something like elbow sleeves, something like that. We have an Amazon store that we're currently working on right now where I'll be selling smoke detectors and, and carbon monoxide detectors and soft clothes hinges and everything construction because we're going to make suggestions to our audience about flipping houses and say, hey, if you want to buy a good smoke detector, we have it on Amazon. You can buy it there or you can buy it directly from us or whatever it is. Um, I think that's pretty much everything I had for you. If you guys enjoyed this podcast, make sure that you give us a five-star review. Matt, if you are private, are you going to go public on Instagram? Because my guy just said, oh, he's private. Um, I know you're starting to get into the social media. Your wife is excellent at it. Sure. She's she, way better than I am. She's, I'm saving all her songs every time because I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to, on Instagram, I'll tell you right now, I don't even know how to find songs and put them on if they're not already on there. So I know if you save other people's songs to put those on there. So yeah. that's where I'm at. Are you going full so, social media? Yeah, I'm, I, I'm pri I am private right now, um, and I've been debating about it, but at the same time, I think like just because it's private doesn't mean that people don't, if they really want to figure out what I'm about, can't figure it out. Right. Um, I just kind of pick and choose what I put on there. It's, I, you'll never see me say, put anything negative. I just, I don't want to, I don't have time for negativity. I right. try and keep it out of my life as much as possible. Um, so you're not going to see me around there ranting or tearing anybody down. Right. But if I have something that is beneficial for other people or I'm proud of, that's what I put up there. Um, in the past, it had been strictly bodybuilding and real estate. Now that I'm doing a little less bodybuilding and more real estate, it'll probably be more focused on real estate and business. Um, that and my faith as well. You know, my wife and I both are Christians, and it's that's at our core of everything we're doing. Um, yeah, I was going to bring that up. You know, the guy who got me started with social media is a big Christian. He leads with that. He's one of the few guys actually in social, uh, Ryan Pineda, and he puts that as part of his, you know, He's like the only guy out there owning that he's a Christian and, and leading by that. And I think that's great. I think that the key thing in social media is being who you are. Yeah. And if the people that don't want to follow you. Sure. It, yeah. And unfortunately, it is a turnoff for some people. However, you know, and I'm not an expert. I know the, the New Testament fairly well, but I'm an amateur on the Bible. Um, but I know what it's done for me. Right. And I know how it's affected my life, my wife. And uh, that's – I never want to do anything that's going to compromise – me morally no matter what kind of money it makes right you know i i want to make a lot of money don't get me wrong because there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money you know we need people with a lot of money to do good things right you know 
Um, however, you'll never see me owning a strip club, a liquor store. Right. And, uh, it's just not my style. Um, right. And you know, to each their own. But that's my path, and that's the way we're going to operate. And there's a ton of great business to be involved in anyway, so I don't feel like I'm missing out. Yeah, and you're not. And, it's, and if it goes against your moral compass or whatever it is, you're not going to be successful about it anyways because it's just not part of it. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to tell the audience uh, about your gym, about how they can find you or anything like that? Um, back to your last question. I think I probably will end up going public with the, the page just because, like I said, I control what I put out anyways. Um, and, you know, talking to you, talking to my other friend, you've prompted me to start a podcast, it's something I've wanted to do for the past few years. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I could do it well. Um, so I'm considering that. You can keep an eye out for that potentially. I might have a studio for you. Um, we're in contract, or not in contract. I have an LOI on that property on 1044 Main. By the time this proper, by the time this podcast goes out, we will either know whether I bought it or I didn't buy it. But it's a, it's something I'm totally scared to do right now. My bank has already told me turned me down. I'm putting that up, like they're like it's not cash flowing enough. Called my partner who's putting the downstroke down. He's like I can refinance my house and get the money. And so like and then the other bank who's actually selling it told me they might give me interim financing for 24 months. So I just feel like I'm going to get it done. I'm, and, and I'm like, I'm not, I know what I got here. Sure. Well, banks are supposed to play it safe, right? Right. That's what they do. Yeah. So, so, whatever. Just because they don't see it. But no, that would be awesome. Um, you know, we've talked about doing some gyms potentially if we were to go in on a pro property together, I'd like to have, you know, a minimum of two more gyms in Kansas city. So you can keep an eye out for that. I think we gotta go big. I like I thought about it, and I'm like, like with the, this current one, there's not enough parking. I think just be based on parking and gyms, it's got to be something that's kind of on the outskirts, not downtown, unless there's that parking. So that's what I'm. Yeah. So you, we've had this discussion before, but the gym, the one in Manhattan, the one in Liberty, those are what we consider sports training facilities. They're fifteen thousand plus square feet, twenty thousand square feet. They have turf. You can pull a sled. You could throw a football in there if you wanted to. Downtown locations, less parking, more compact. We consider that a metro facility. Right. Uh, serves its purpose for the local residents. Um, but, you know, the nice thing about our gyms is you can go to any of them. You're, if you're a member at one, you're a member at all. That's awesome. Yeah, and your 24-hour access. So um, You got it set up nice. I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful gym. If you're, if you're looking to work out in Kansas City, if you're looking to start a gym, if you're looking to get into business, you need to check out Matt Karstetter. You need to check out his wife's Alexis Karstetter, her page. They got a lot of cool stuff going on. They're in great shape. If you want to get inspired to get in shape, just go to their pages. That is like one of the things. I'm like, these guys are in dog shape. Like when you're saying, oh, this guy's working 24 seven, I'm like, yeah, because I'm not working out like you guys, you know? And so I'm sacrificing some things. I want to. Thank you for coming onto the show. I want to thank you for coming down to Vegas on just like, I was like, I'm just going to throw it out there. I'm like, they say yes. <laughs> great. You know, if they say no, no big deal. Pretty easy to say yes to. Right. So we're going down to the Raiders game. Yep. You ready for that? Absolutely. I'm excited. No offense. I don't give a damn about football. Yeah. I love construction and I want to see that stadium. Right. So you're going to evaluate the cheap flooring that they put in there from uh, floor and decor. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you guys for tuning into the Troy Kearns podcast where we talk about all things real estate, business, and entrepreneurship. Today we had a very special guest on our show, Matt Karstetter from the foundation, from Jim Hemp, from Call Sign Fitness Equipment. Make sure you check him out. Make sure you give us a five-star review and we'll talk to you soon. Peace.